we're going to take a quick tour of the new user interface in TPE 3.0 for iOS. I have the app running here on an iPhone 6. You can see I have the map set in San Francisco. Uh, beneath the map here is a timeline of events for the selected date, which is the 14th of February, shown at the, the top there. And you can see that on this date the sun rises at 7.01 a.m. at an azimuth of 105.8 degrees. That's either from true north or magnetic north, depending on uh, the settings that you have for the app. You can scroll the timeline so we can see moonrise early in the morning, the various twilight times, uh, through to the end of the day. So that's everything that happens for the day. Beneath the timeline is a chart which is the altitude of the sun and the moon through the day. You can just swipe this from left to right and you can see the time changes, the azimuth and the altitude of the sun and the moon are displayed in the legend on the chart. And in addition, you'll notice on the map that as I move the time, you can see there's the sun and the moon tracking around. You can see the shadow lines in the opposite direction, so there's the moon shadow getting longer, getting shorter as I go back. Um, same for the sun, long shadows as we approach sunrise in the morning. And the circle that you see, basically what that does is when the shadow line is the same length as the radius of the circle, that means that the sun or the moon are at 6 degrees above the horizon. So it's an indication that the sun or the moon are, are low in the sky essentially. So that's either good light if it's the sun or it's uh, a, maybe a full moon hanging low in the sky that you could photograph against. Um, a landmark or a building, etc. If we want to change the date, uh, there are a number of ways to do it. If I tap the date in the top there, I get uh, the ability to choose the date. So let's say I want to go to March 16th. Choose that, hit back. There is March 16th. You'll see that now sun rises at 7.20. I can also change day by day. So using these single arrows to go to the next day. You can see that's going forward day by day and back day by day. Or I can use the next or previous event buttons. That's taken us to when the moon is at perigee, i.e. closest to the Earth, so largest in appearance in the sky. Next event, new moon at 2.36. Next event, equinox on March 20th at 3.45. If I tap on the date again, you'll see that those list of events actually appears beneath the calendar. So you can choose them directly. I can go to... For example, the June full moon, and there it is. So that's how to choose dates, how to choose events. We've seen the timeline, we've seen the altitude chart. What about finding a location? Probably one thing you'll want to do is to go to your own current location. You can do that with the top uh, button on the right-hand side here. I tap that, it goes to where I'm currently uh, situated here in Boulder, Colorado. If I press it again, it's going to track to the heading. So as I rotate the device, you'll see that the map rotates and so forth. And it shows you the bearing in the uh, top left there and the direction. So I'm pointing south, more or less. There we go. And to cancel that, I can either just push that button again or you can just move the map with your finger and that will also cancel the tracking. Um, Let's say I want to move the pin now to downtown Boulder, so we'll put it on Pearl Street. I can just put the, as I pan the map, you see that little reticle, the crosshairs are over Pearl Street. So I can tap that and that'll put the pin there. Alternatively, I can move it and then tap the recenter button, which is uh, second from the top on the right. And that positions the, the red pin to exactly where you need it. Um, you can then in addition, uh, if you want to find a different city altogether, go to Locations. I can search for San Francisco. You see I have that typed in already. I'll do a new one just to show you. Let's do New York instead. So New York. It goes and searches. I've got a couple of locations saved already. You can see East and West 42nd Street, but also there's a general New York uh, result from the web. So I can tap that, send the red pin there, and there we are in New York. If you want to save that location, uh, you tap that, press that little download arrow, and that's now saved in your locations on the device. I can cancel that, and there's a list of, of uh, locations I've been working with. And you can choose any of those at any time. So we can go to the Royal Observatory in Greenwich in London at just one click. A couple of other tips with the timeline here. You can swipe down to hide it, and then swipe up on the chart to redisplay it.
So you can do that if you want to maximize the visible area for, for the map. Another thing you can do with the map, two fingers push up to tilt, two fingers twist to rotate. So that sometimes gives you a nice perspective view on the area. Put the timeline back, tap the compass to go back to north, two fingers back down to tilt to the overhead view. One more thing on the timeline, double tap, and you get a list of display preferences for what information you would like to see. Default is, default as you'd imagine, if you tap Essentials, that gives you the minimum set, so that's basically Civil Twilights, um, Sun and Moon Rise and Set, and that's it. Or you could, for example, do uh, Daylight Essentials, so that might be if you're a cinematographer working only in daylight, you don't care about the moon, it shows you Civil Start, Sunrise, the Transit of the Sun, that's basically when it's directly over, you know, not directly overhead, but due south, due north, highest point in the sky for the day, uh, sunset and civil end. So choose the one that is best for for your use case. Everything is what it says, everything, so all the twilights. Uh, we have golden hour, which we're calling golden hour when the sun is between the horizon and plus six degrees. Transit of the sun, full moon, moonrise, etc. I'll switch that back to default. So that's either a double tap or a long press on the timeline to bring that up. You can change the selected map type. Just tap on the map and you get a choice of five. In this case I have uh, Google Maps selected. You can also use Apple. Now that's in settings but here we have Google so we have the standard map or the hybrid satellite map or terrain or OpenStreetMap. This map plus the next one, which is Open Cycle Map Topographic, they're both available offline. So anything you view with those map types selected will be available offline. Let's take a quick look at the sharing options available in the app. At the top right here, you can click the action icon. And this gives you a number of ways in which you can share the information from TPE to other applications or to friends, etc. First of all, AirDrop, you can drop it to any other iOS device that has the app installed and it can open the same shot, the same view, same date, same time, etc. Alternatively, you can send it via iMessage uh, or email or the various social media networks, Evernote, Flickr, etc. And what you get typically when you do that is if I do a message, for example, it includes a screenshot and it includes a link. You see that HTTP uh, ephemeris slash etc. That's a, a unique link that will open this shot in the TPE web app and from there you can open it back up in the in the iOS app on iOS. Um, and then on the bottom row here you can save an image, you can copy an image, you can print it if you have a, an AirPrint compatible printer. Um, but perhaps most useful you can email the shot and that includes a lot of details. I'll show you that. You get an email pre-populated with the plan, the date, the time, all the positions, the timeline, and a screenshot, and links, as you can see there at the top. Uh, alternatively, you can add it to your calendar. So, save the date type functionality, add to calendar. It gives you a default name for the title. If you use the save location, it'll be the location title. The coordinates, and again, there you go, you have a link, which you can always use to reopen this, this um, shot plan at any point in the future. So there's a lot more functionality we haven't covered in this this uh, this overview, including the whole geodetics function, which is the the grey pin, um, and visual search in particular, which is much expanded in version three. I'll do a separate video to cover those plus some of the shadow functionality, which which is also new. Hope you've enjoyed this. Send any questions you have to support at photoephemeris.com, and we'll be very happy to answer them. Thanks. Mm -hmm.